Hi uh, guys, Tony here. Today I've got on the podcast the longevity expert, Dr. Neil Pulvin. This is a past episode I've been meaning to air for a while now. In this episode, we're going to be talking about metformin and its pros and cons for longevity. And stay tuned to the end to show a recent study with actual human age reversal. I, I'm having less and less faith in metformin as a true anti is It's good and it was great and it's also incredibly inexpensive compared to the other ones. I mean, it's great because it's diabetic medication. So we know that again, the link between sugar and all that. It's also great being metformin is great because it boosts what's called AMPK, which is an energy booster. Um, so that people think that has some anti-aging benefits, definitely anti-inflammatory. So it has some benefit, but the, there's really not been a good anti, again, you're up mentioning data. There's not made much great anti-aging data at all on metformin. Acrobos does. Yeah, because I understand, I mean, do they have similar negative points? Because I understand metformin being like a double-edged sword and that it can impact, you know, your um, hypertrophy, you know, your body's ability to recoup after exercise. Yeah. It can, I got, I don't remember if I got into bed with this, but like a week or so ago. Okay. It depends on the person. In theory, that's what it can do. There are people, it's kind of like people who are doing, I, I know I'm going to try how popular they are there, here, like Monjuro, the GLP-1s, like Monjuro and Ozempic, um, th there's concern with the amount of weight loss. It depends on the person, um, and it also depends, are they taking the, the adequate amount of protein? Are they working out, doing resistance training a couple of times a week? Are they taking creatine? Um, if you, you can, it's kind of like, you have to fill the bucket faster than it's leaking. So if you're taking metformin, but you're working out hard and you're taking the appropriate amount of protein, you're probably not going to have any problems um, for most people. I've had people say that I, I was on metformin, my, my muscle growth kind of stagnated and I stopped it and it got back. So it's not, it's, very, it's not as common if you're doing the right things. If you're not doing the right things and you're taking metformin, then the bucket's just leaking too fast and you're going to have problems. So mm. um Again, metformin has its benefit. I just don't use it as much compared to Acrobos anymore. And then yeah. new, this new product called SGLT2s, which are probably going to jump all of them in a year or two as, as the data comes out. Yeah, I understand. that's what Ryan, um, talking to him a few weeks ago, he was saying that's what he's kind of phasing out, doesn't do metformin much anymore. And he's doing the is it SG, SG, SGLT yep. yeah, yep. inhibitors. Yeah, yeah. Ryan's a good, Ryan is usually two steps ahead of uh most people in terms of where to go um it's kind of evidence but what he does so uh yeah no i i the only issue we're having with sglt2s is just the cost they're very expensive right now at least in the us so most people don't want to pay 50 100 dollars a pill for something they have to take so obviously metformin and acrobos are just less expensive so that's kind of where we are now that that'll hopefully i know at least again, the US, the, the cheaper ones coming very soon. Yeah, yeah, because that's something, because Ryan noticed I was mentioning, because I was doing metformin and I was doing it four days a week, fairly high dose, like, is it 1700 milligrams a day, so morning and evening. And then four days a week combined with the rapamycin I started in July as well. The combination of the two of them, I think I was noticing more delayed onset muscle soreness. So then I, cut down the metformin to two days a week. And then that seems to have kind of leveled it out to some degree. Yeah, the rub might, yeah, that, that sounds right. Yeah, I mean, I don't, again, I, I don't really, I don't, I, I, I can think of it a handful of patients who just really think it works because there's, there are some professors and healthcare pundits that say that metformin is the best thing since sliced bread. It's it's not as many more, but they say so-and-so, it's a so-and-so said it and I'm going to do it. I'm like, okay. But it, again, I don't think it just it doesn't work as well. Hmm. And you also got some side effects with it. Yeah, yeah. And that's why Ryan made the switch himself. He was saying, yeah, they just noticed like, yeah, the aching muscles. But yeah, as you say, some people get, I think, a little bit biased in something they believe it. And then whereas, you know, it's better to be open minded and just look at the data and adjust, you know, and things when new data comes out. You got to be careful listening to any talk, any promoter or any social media in, uh, influencer. I mean, you want to do your own research as much as you can and talk to somebody who's kind of unbiased. Hmm. Yeah. As David Sinclair says, you know, you have to be your own doctor in some ways because, you know, if you wait for your GP to recommend something, you know, you could be waiting decades for something to be fully FDA approved or whatever it is. And yeah, you have to yeah, be... tell us in the, in the U S the line is it takes about 17 to 20 years 
for something to become mainstream in the literature and for all the doctors to use. And that's obviously half your life, but not half, hopefully not half, like a quarter of your lifetime, which makes no sense. So, I mean, especially in New York, which is one of the most conservative areas of the country. I mean, patients will come to me and they say, I mentioned peptides or I mentioned metformin or whatever to my doctor. And they told me that doesn't work. And I'm just like, what? And it just, it's, it's really confusing and confounding of kind of how slow some things are, are able to incorporate people. But people, I think people become their own doctors more and more. I think, unfortunately, since COVID and the lockdown, they now are, are going to, they're trying to do things ahead of when their doctor is. So that's, that's mostly good. As you may know, the data with metformin is primarily in animals, but this study is actually a human one over 24 weeks. Although the participants are virally suppressed HRV patients, it's still promising data and they're using really good clocks. So you've got the pheno age and even better, the grim age, which is up there as one of the, the better clocks for all-cause mortality. And if you look at the numbers, 3.5 years and 1.84 years over 24 weeks, depending on which clock, these are really big numbers here. So metformin does have its place. It does have drawbacks, as I highlighted in the video. But if you find the right dose and mix it in with your training, there can be some benefits.